finally watched season one of Welcome to Plathville, and I am so excited to share my thoughts with you. Now, I understand that I am many years late to the party, but it's better late than never. Okay, so overview of what Welcome to Plathville is. It's basically the story of a family who's super hardcore Christian fundamentalist. Honestly, I don't know what the goal was. Like, I started the show and I was like, why the hell would these people want to be reality TV stars? Because like, I know the Duggars, like Jim Bob was always like, we're gonna share our religion and our way of life with the world and we're bringing fundamentalism and the IBLP, we are bringing that to the mainstream. But that doesn't seem like that's the vibe of the Plath family. So I'm like, why would they agree to do this? Like, is this all a facade? Is this just like the mom really wants money? Like it doesn't really make sense to me. So I'm excited to maybe watch further seasons and get a feel for what's happening. So part of the Plath shtick is that they have like a lot of rules. Like not only are they fundamentalists, but like the parents are just strict. Like those world strictest parents videos, like that's their vibe. So the rules are no sugar, they can't do like TV, internet, social media, tech. They are all homeschooled, like none of them have friends. They live on like a really remote farm, even though it's, if you look into it, it's like not that remote. They do church at home, like the public churches were not fundamental enough for them. They were like, no, we have to take this into our own hands. Obviously the household is patriarchy <laughs> and that's like what they're raised with, like super strict dating rules, clothing rules. Honestly, I was raised LDS, so I have a little bit of that fundy in me. So a lot of these rules, I was like, been there, done that. And you know what, I'm so brain broken that some of these, I was like, mm, that's not that big of a deal. Obviously, I know, I know, I know. It's just because I come from sort of a similar background, which I think makes me like the perfect commentator on this or the worst. Now let me introduce the Plath family. Barry and Kim are the parents. They're really old, I think, or they just didn't age well, I'm gonna be honest. Um, they weren't raised Monday, but they just like decided to do that. I think Kim seems like she had a lot of trauma in her younger years, and that's kind of why she decided to raise her kids this way. She is a naturopathic doctor. They brought that up in one of the episodes and I was like, of course she is, of course she is. Oh God, don't even get me started on that. I feel like I'm gonna piss people off if I say what I think about that. And Barry does something with transportation, I don't know. The oldest child is Hosanna and she's in her early 20s, but she's literally not in the show because she gets married and she moves to Ohio before they start filming. I've never seen her, but again, I've only watched season one. So I'm just gonna like put her over here to make room for relevant characters. One of my favorite moments is when they're introducing Hosanna and they say, Hosanna is perfect. She plays violin so well that she got a full ride scholarship to college, but why would she need college when she learned so much by being a stay-at-home wife? Not knocking on stay-at-home wives, but I'm like, you had a full red scholarship to college and you said, nope, she learns more by not going to college. What? That's crazy. So I guess she's like perfect. Um, I'm kind of sad she's not in the show because she seems like she might be kind of weird and I would love to see that. The next oldest is Ethan, who is 21. He is, he's a really sweet guy. He's like probably the most naive out of all the kids in the family. He's always smiley and it's adorable. I think he works as a mechanic and he's 21 years old and married to Olivia Plath. Now, Olivia is also from a fundy background, but apparently her family is not as fundy as the Plaths and the parents kind of look down on her for that. Oh, I'm putting her below Ethan so you understand that these two are a pair, they're married. My girl. The next oldest is 18 year old Micah Plath. Now he is like, starts out the show as like, I'm a farm boy. I just like to work and make money. Um, since he's 18, he has a new level of freedom. He drives his car and is allowed to hang out with friends and make a little bit more of his own decisions. And he is just eating that right up. Next, we have 16 year old Mariah, who is the troublemaker of the family. She wears booty shorts and makeup and crop tops and She's always she, she's always arguing with the parents and trying to be rebellious or their version of rebellious. Her and Micah have a really cute relationship. I, I mean, part of it is because he has a car and a little bit more freedom so they can team up on things, but also they're just really sweet brother and sister. The next oldest is 15 year old Lydia. Sorry the picture is like scratched. Um, this is not 
a high-end production. And that's all I have to say. Lydia is like the golden child. She does exactly what her mom wants. She's kind of like parentified, hardcore. And she actually scares me a lot. So we'll get into that later. Fuck, my pictures are stuck together. Fuck, that's not good. Oh well. <laughs> The next to list is Isaac, and honestly, he's really not in season one. He's almost like a chess piece. We'll get into that later. Next, we have the three younger sisters who are very irrelevant to this season. So we're just putting them there. I'll let you know if season two, they matter. That sounded mean. That, they, they matter. You girls matter. If they see it, they, you, have worth and you matter. So now I wanna give you a walkthrough of some of the main events in season one. Now there were only six episodes for some reason and I really don't understand why there were only six episodes. So this should be a quickie. So episode one, we're just introduced to this family who lives on a farm, who doesn't go to school, who doesn't wear shoes. It's like the typical TLC setup episode. Like, wow. Also, there are so many close-ups of feet in this show, and I don't know if the producers are weird or if they thought this was like a theme, because like there is this line in the beginning where they're like, we don't wear shoes because we don't really like it. It just feels natural to be on the... Uh, that to me is like not the craziest thing. So I don't know why we keep getting close-ups of their feet the whole entire series, but. So basically episode one sets us up and then Olivia Plath, that's Ethan's wife, is a photographer and wants to hire the rebellious one, Mariah, to be an assistant shooter for a wedding that she's been hired to shoot in San Francisco. She also tells Mariah that if she wants to start helping her at weddings, she needs a black dress and she needs a cell phone. And the cell phone thing is a big deal with their family, big deal. Also, the black dresses she has her try on are like short. I mean, Mariah already dresses like Madonna in the 80s, so I don't think a short dress is the end of the world to her parents, but there's already tension between Olivia and the parents for sure because she's not as fundy as they want her to be and clearly there have been circumstances that have happened prior to the show filming. Um, also while they're dress shopping you get one of my favorite moments where Ethan Plath uh, sees a stick on bra for the first time and loses his shit. So Mariah brings up the San Francisco thing to her mom and it makes the mom so uncomfortable. I think on purpose, Mariah throughout the series brings up uncomfortable situations on camera because I think Mama Plath is like obsessed with looking good on camera. So I think on purpose, she's like, can I go to San Francisco? And she does in front of the cameras and Kim's like, <laughs> yes. But really she's like, okay, yes, but only if you finish your homework and you're two weeks behind on your homework and you're a dumb bitch, so it will never happen. And then she just gives her a ton of homework. So she's like thinking, this will not happen. But then Olivia's stressing because she's like, okay, should I book her a hotel and a flight or not? So what a bad idea, Olivia, to hire a teenager who's never done photography before, by the way, who you're not even sure can make the trip. Like why not hire a real adult who works in your industry? That to me is crazy. Like it's clearly just a dig at Kim, which I love as a viewer for the drama of the show. But as a person, I'm like, I want to side with Olivia, but a lot of the shit she does just feels un necessary and mean-spirited. <laughs> so episode two, Mariah ends up finishing her loads of homework and everybody's super snarky about it. They're like, seriously, dumb bitch? There's no way you finish your homework. It's like Cinderella the ball. Let me check my school. I'm done. You done? I'm done all, all the way. You finished okay. all of it. You don't believe me? Well, no, I believe you. I do feel like the show was kind of unfairly making Kim seem like the villain for being opposed to Mariah going to San Francisco, but honestly, the fact that you would let your like rebellious teenage daughter go to San Francisco with a woman who you are not on good terms with without like real adult supervision is actually crazy. Like I think most parents would feel uncomfortable about letting their 16 year old go to San Francisco unaccompanied. I, I don't think that's crazy. I think Kim is crazy, but I don't think that's something that's worth judging her for. Also, there's a montage of Olivia and Mariah hanging out in San Francisco and it's so cringe. It's just like, it's like thoroughly modern Millie in New York. She's like, oh gee, this is the big city. It ain't so bad now, is it? This is your first time ever having cotton candy. It, try it. But it feels like cow pretty. Just get a little bit and put it in your mouth and try it. Oh my gosh. 
I'm addicted. She takes off her shoes in the train and it's so gross. Yeah, I don't know, the San Francisco montage is really boring and it's Olivia being like, have a soda, I don't tell. They have a lot of fun though, they have a lot of fun. I'm sounding like a really judgmental bitch. Um, they're having fun at this point and I'm happy for them. It's like, then while well, the girls are in San Francisco, Ethan's trying to fill his time since his wife is out of the house. So he goes and hangs out with the boys. He goes back home and hangs out with his siblings. And Kim, this is where the boy mama goes mask off. She's like, when Ethan's over with Olivia, he's just different. And when we have him alone, he can really be himself. And I just don't know what to do because I really miss my son. And I went, red flag. Red flag, boy mama, boy mama. Episode three, Barry and Kim go on an anniversary trip, which means the kids are home alone. So they start out the episode very clearly being like, these are the rules for while we're gone. And the biggest rule is that Olivia and Ethan cannot be in the house while the parents are not home. So what do you think happens this episode? This episode is great because basically you watch Lydia get parentified the entire time. It's so uncomfortable. She's like, so, of course, Mike is in charge because he's the oldest, but really, Lydia's in charge because she is the mother. And then she goes to the whiteboard and there's this giant list of chores and she's like, now Lydia, you don't have to do them all, but you do have to make sure that they're done. And Lydia knows that it's just gonna all fall onto her. I feel so bad for her. But like part of, you know, being a fundy is that as a woman, to be feminine, to be a godly, individual you have to keep it's like the keep sweet that the polygamists do it's like you just have to be nice and you have to be you know okay with it so she just like mm -hmm. her eyes are dying inside tears are about to roll down her cheeks but she's like gladly mother i just wanted to include this olivia and ethan go to the gym and it produces one of the best clips of all time i don't know how that clip hasn't gone viral if like if vine were around that would Viral in an instant, it's so good, inserting it now. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Put in the work, put in the hour. Barry and Kim are on their honeymoon in this episode. I honestly don't know what happened because just watching them barefoot on the beach made me uncomfortable. So I said, skip, 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 skip. And then of course the bomb is dropped. Olivia and Ethan are sitting in their house, which is 10 minutes away from the Plath house. And they're like, why can't we see the siblings? That's a stupid rule. Let's go break it. So they drive over and they're like, kids do not tattletale but we're coming over, we're getting ice cream and pizza and soda, and we're gonna freaking party. They do like truck races. The parents come up and immediately Micah's like, yeah, we had so much fun with Olivia and Ethan last night. And I was watching that and I was like, I thought Micah was cool. Why is Micah being the rat? Like you would think Lydia would be the rat or like one of the babies, like no, it's Micah. What the hell Micah? So the parents are like, oh, they did exactly what we told them not to do. This is a problem. But then for some reason, immediately as that happens, these two drive up and they're like, we want Isaac, the 14 year old, to be in our band. Why can't he be in our band? You guys are mean. But it's like weird, like, like you just broke their rules and now you're demanding that Isaac be in their band. I, can't, I get why Olivia has a chip on her shoulder about this because like it does stem from them just not thinking Olivia is good enough for their precious baby boy. That's where it stems from and that would piss me off. But also it's like, we just broke your rules and your trust. Why don't you trust us? Let Isaac be in our band. Also, why do you care that much about a 14 year old boy playing drums for your band? Like, I don't know. To me, it just was weird. And then they have, an argument with the parents and the parents are obviously being like rude too like they're like there's not a side to pick it's just fun to watch like i said and then lydia does the funniest thing possible <laughs> this is the best she starts crying and sneaks off into the woods and she's like doing like prayers she's like, please and she's like sobbing <clears throat> and like muttering it's i'm an asshole it's really funny and that's where we leave episode three episode four this is kind of a filler episode basically Kim and Barry are staying firm on no Isaac in the band, but they want to offer a peace offering to Olivia and Ethan to try and improve the relationship. So they make a big deal of it. They're like, come over to our house. We have something that will just fix all the tension. <laughs> and they walk in and it's a giant, like one of those stupid like craft ships, but it's giant, it's giant. And of course Ethan freaks out because I guess it was something that Ethan has wanted for a long time. And Olivia's like, oh, you shouldn't have. It, it's just hysterical that it's like, I got you a peace offering that is really just a gift only for my son and not for you, bitch. Like another boy mama scenario, I was 
dying. Like, I honestly don't even, I don't even think Kim thought that was a good idea. I think she literally was that to stir the pot. Mariah and Kim have a discussion and Mariah just rips Kim a new one. It was kind of boring though, so I didn't watch all the way through. So. Episode five. So Mariah starts saying, I want to go to college. It's almost time. Let's do it. And Kim pretends that she's interested. This is another thing where I'm like, I think she brought this up on camera just so Kim would be like, yeah. Yep, you can go to college. Okay, let's talk about it. So she wants to research colleges and it's the funniest thing in the world. She's like, can I have the login to the laptop so I can start researching? Kim does a voiceover. Only Lydia and I are allowed to have the login. Like how crazy if your younger sister has to log you into the laptop, like how can that not breed resentment? Like that's crazy. Also, you can tell how like disconnected and uneducated they are. Like this homeschool curriculum that Kim is doing is not good. Like she sits down and starts talking about college and she's like, I'm thinking I wanna go to college for dance, which I think is awesome. But what a crazy thing to say when you like, she doesn't understand the concept of college, I don't think. She's never danced in her life, I don't think. Like it's, it's, it just makes me super sad, but it's also kind of funny. She just goes, I'm gonna do dancing. This is also an episode where Olivia's like, Micah, you should do modeling. And Micah's like, okay. So they go to an agency and meet a representative and it's very successful and Micah gets signed. But it is kind of awkward, the Kim and Olivia conversation. They're like, yeah he's gonna go be a model. And she's like, oh. My favorite part of Micah's modeling journey is this clip of Barry and Kim talking about modeling, being like, Micah can do whatever he wants, we're supportive of him, as long as he's not doing pictures in his undies. I immediately look up Micah's Instagram. Then finally, Ethan, Kim, and Barry sit down to really sort out their issues and start working through the problem. I'm amazed that Olivia is 21 years old and she is so well-spoken. She knows how to stand up for herself so well. But then in contrast, Ethan's just sitting there pretending that like nothing's happening. Like if that were my husband, I would be so pissed because he's so passive. She's arguing with his parents and he doesn't step in to say anything. He's so unhelpful. It drives me insane to watch. He's like in his own world. He just checks out. I'm like that, you don't get to check out. These are your fucking parents. I am guessing that that will be a challenge in their marriage going forward. Episode six, Micah gets his first modeling job and he's like 45 minutes late. I have to assume that that was planned by producers because why are the producers just at the shoot waiting for him? Also, it's the most uncomfortable photo shoot of his life and he immediately falls in love with the first woman he sees that isn't a sister, so. Kim takes Mariah on a tour of a college and as they're touring the college and going through all these like uh, seminars and Q and A's, they're talking about normal public high school and Mariah's fucking fuming. She's like, what the hell? I could have done like sports and had friends and had extracurriculars and it would have been way easier for me to get like, what the hell is this Kim? And Kim's like, no, you had a better experience. You got to tour with our family band and record on CDs. I thought the phrase record on CDs was extra fun. She goes, normal kids don't get to do stuff like that. I'm like, normal kids don't get to record on CDs? Yeah, maybe because they know how to upload to Spotify. The place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. They even meet with a sorority director and they're talking to her about the philanthropy and Kim's like, that's not true. Back in my day when I went to Florida State University, our sororities were just about being trashy and getting drunk. And then she kind of goes into her past about being a wild party girl and she talks about how unsafe it was. So, I mean, I can really admire that as a mom, you want to learn from your own experience and protect your kids. So that I can totally see. And she just got, she just got lost. She got lost in the process of it. Then we end the season with what I call the red wedding. Olivia Plath decides to throw a surprise 17th birthday party for Mariah Plath. She just tells the Plath family, we're going out to dinner, be there at this time. Then Kim and Barry walk in and she's like, let me pull you aside. This is actually a surprise party for your daughter. Like how awkward that you didn't tell them that this was a surprise party. Now they feel uncomfortable because 
Like, why would you not tell them? It's a surprise party for her, not for the whole family. And now they don't have a gift and they don't know what's going on and they weren't prepared. So now they look like scumbag parents, you know? That, that would piss me off so bad. Then Mariah walks in, she's so happy, and immediately Olivia goes, I have a gift for you. And it's tickets <laughs> to Carrie Underwood. First off, this is a slap in the face because they're not allowed to listen to secular music and that's like a big deal for their family. Two, there's no way they're allowed to go to concerts. So that's a second F you. The next thing that I thought was so incredibly out of pocket is that these two literally are sipping on beers at the dinner table. Okay, coming from a Mormon household, like even I wouldn't pull up to my grandma's house and start downing a beer in front of everybody. That would make me so incredibly uncomfortable. Ethan goes, I didn't even realize, I didn't even think of it. I'm like, there's no way you didn't think of that because you've only been drinking, this guy had only been drinking for probably like two months. So that was just so wild. And then of course you get a cutaway scene of Kim saying it's a terrible influence on her kids, we were pissed. Obviously that's what they were thinking. Obviously that's what they're thinking. Finally, now that Olivia, and she's smirking the whole time watching the parents just like tweak their eyeballs and freak the fuck out. <laughs> Olivia goes, and I think Mariah has one more surprise for y'all. Mariah's like, oh yeah, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for being here, everybody. Um, I'm moving to Minnesota. And everybody goes, what? She goes, Olivia booked me a one-way ticket to Minnesota and then I'm moving in with my grandparents. Peace. That's a crazy thing to do for a minor. What do you mean? You booked a minor a one-way plane ticket? Like, all the way across the country. What? That moment was hilarious because it, when you watch the scene, it's just like, it couldn't get worse. No, it could get worse. It couldn't get worse than this. No, it could get worse. Olivia, that was some serious fuckery. But that's what really got me like, I cannot wait to watch all the other seasons of the show, I will not be able to put the HBO Max down. That was the craziest moment of TV I've seen in so long. That is, this is like, Kim's definitely fucked up. And I know Olivia is projecting her own experiences, trying to save these kids from fundamentalism. I know it. I know that she probably does have Mariah's best interests. I know that she is just thinking like, what would I have wanted for myself? I totally see that. And I think that's, I think she is like, a good person. But I also think that the way that she's going about it is so actually crazy. Maybe it's like the homeschooling that like she's not thinking on the correct cognitive, maybe like the neuron. I, like I'm obsessed with it, but also just the execution was the worst thing you possibly could have done. Um, I would love to know your thoughts on season one of Welcome to Plathville. And I'm sure once again, like the sister wise video i fucked something up so if you want to tell me do it in the comments but be nice thank you so much for watching this was really fun to make um <laughs> my dad keeps asking me when i'll get a play button and i don't know what to tell him because i don't know what it's gonna happen so please subscribe anyway